Amen. God is so good. This is the last Sunday that is in, that is the month of February. And we do thank God that we're still alive and that in him we live and we move. And not only that, but we have our being. Amen. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that God has allowed us to be able to share the gospel that is once again. And we thank you for the gospel, even if, even if it's in song, because we believe that there's a message in song. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today. Thank you, God, that you allow us once again to come in the winter months and to be able to share the gospel. We ask you, God, that you would bless the day that is once again. And everybody that is a part of us, and even the viewers now at this time, God, that you would cover them and bless them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, the scripture that we're going to uh, 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 embark upon, this time is really found in the book of Philippians. That is the second chapter. And we're going to read that is, uh, that is from the, uh, uh, the second and the, uh, the third, excuse me, and fourth verse. It says, let nothing be done that is through strife of anger, but in the loneliness of the loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. We thank God, and now, believe it or not, Sister Linda Johnson is going to come and share, and share that message in song. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, 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 oh,
saying, visit me. Let that blood of Jesus Christ, whereby he hung the cross, let the blood run down my street to my house. And please come by here. Kumbaya. And we thank God for that. Amen. Amen. There are many needs that we have. Amen. And we know that all the needs are not just food and raiment, a car to ride in, and a street or a freeway to put it on. But we have all kinds of needs that is among us. I can't live with them all. But within your heart, you know the needs that you have. We talk about stimulus. We talk about getting a vaccine. And we know all of those things are needs that we have. But we have many, many others, thousands of other needs. And what we're going to do is we're going to ask God. That is, after this song, we're going to go to the throne of grace and ask God to look upon those needs and to cover every last person that's in need. Amen. So the letter is going to come to us once again. Us and a special kind of a way. 
We know that our lives are not over with yet. But when we look at the many people, over 500,000 that has left us, there's a spirit of mourning that comes over us. And blessed are they that moment, for their share one of these days be comforted. We ask, O oh God, that you would comfort and that you would bless us. Thank you, Lord, once again for how you have blessed us. You've been the doctor, Lord, in the sick room, Lord. You've been the lawyer in the courtroom. You've been the one that has set us down and counseled us. And we thank you for that. We ask again that you would bless and be with us in a special kind of a way. In Jesus' name, amen. The song says, Give me you. And that is my desire. I want more of God in everything that I do. And that should be your desire as well. Give me you. Give me you.
Amen. We thank God. That is for that song that says, Lord, above all, give me you. I'm not worried about somebody going to the moon. It's good if they want to go. I'm not worried even about my wedding that's in the next year or two. I'm not troubled about all, amen, of those things that people are doing around me. But most of all, in a book, oh, I would rather have you. The songwriter said, give me you. What words, what words, what words to be in a song? Give me you above anything else. Father, we are grateful. Yeah. And Lord, we thank you once again as we come. Somebody is waiting for some encouragement. Somebody is waiting to hear something that will change their life. A change the direction that we are going in. Somebody's waiting to learn from a text of scripture. They read it before, but they don't, they haven't seen what was in it. And we hope, God, that we can bring out what's in the scripture today. We ask that you would bless once again. We thank you for everything that you've done for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless that is in the living. Amen. Now, we all know, and I'm going to talk from Philippians uh, three, uh, 2, 3, and 4. But we all know, which talks about selfishness. We all know people that has been selfish in our lifetime. Uh -huh. One of the great struggles that I have had, and I must confess from the outside, said, is that I must confess this from the outset. That is, I have been selfish in my lifetime. And I still have to fight against selfishness overtaking me. I have to fight, believe it or not. You see, from slipping into that selfish mode, we all are selfish more than we like to be. You're not going to accept that, but that's the truth. Amen. And selfishness is the seed of the root of sin. That's what it is. The selfishness, let me say it again, is the seed of the root of sin. And we must be real careful because selfishness is a fallen human you better get that now. Selfishness is a fallen human condition. Amen. It, it takes way back to Adam and Eve. And God said, don't do this and that and the other. But guess what? They opened their own door and left and went in a direction of self. And because of that, guess what? We all suffered. We all suffered, believe it or not, because of that. Amen. You see, not saying ourselves, saying that uh, we are better than God. This is what selfishness is all about. And we elevate that is what we think is right and what is best. You understand? And it's over and above what God is thinking. That's a dangerous thing, isn't it? And then we, 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 we break God's laws. That is when we think that we're placing our own desires. That is ahead of God's will and God's desire. And then we make ourselves the ultimate frame of reference. A selfish person, can I step back and say this, is a very dangerous person. Yeah. It's a very dangerous person, believe it or not. Now, there are a lot of, uh, how can I say it? Uh, there are a lot of different words that can describe that is a selfish person. Amen? And in the English language, you use words like uh, uh, they're arrogant, they're vain, they're self-conceited, they're boastful, pride, vain, you understand me? All of that, believe it or not. Somebody said that they were big-headed. Amen. They have the big-headed. They're hard-headed. Amen. They're self-possessed. Amen. Amen. And, and, and not only that, but they are egomaniacs. They are ostentatious. They are self-indulged. But all of these words, amen, describe a person that's only thinking about me, myself, and I. Because a selfish person, you have to be careful now. They don't care about a whole lot of people. Amen. It also warns us that selfish and a selfish ambition is vain conceit. The Bible speaks of being lovers of yourself. Amen. Pleasing myself all the time. You understand? Now the word not only tells us what selfishness is, but it warns us not to be selfish. It says, don't be selfish. 
You understand? Selfishness can take and all kinds of shapes and forms that is believing or not. Now, you can be what I call overtly selfish, and then some people are more refined, a subtle, a subtle, excuse me, selfish. You can be you can be that way either or, but all of it is still what? Nothing but natural bone sin. That's all it is. And we try to do what? Use words like guilt and peer pressure. Amen. You see, and we say that folks are just like that. They're just like that grandma. Or uh, he or she just like that, you understand. We say that. You see, it's not only selfishness, it's not only about action, amen, but it can also be about what we don't do. I don't want to do the dishes, and so I'm going to try to get away from it. Uh, doing that is the dishes, believe it or not. You see, uh, you get better about uh, it's somebody else's recognition, somebody else's money and their status. There's no need of you getting upset about that. Now, I can't do anything about how much money somebody makes. Uh, I, I can't do anything about it, but I hope they make some money. You understand what I'm talking about? Oh, they are doing what? They, when a person is blessed in certain, certain areas, you don't want them to be blessed in. You get selfish. And selfish people who serve, in many cases, serve to draw attention to themselves. That's what they're trying to do. They don't care about nobody else. But they're trying to do what? Draw attention to themselves. They want people to take notice of them. Amen. If you're selfish to the point that whereby uh, you talk about your pain all the time, you talk about your trouble all the time, you tell you the truth, your testimony, amen. You always want people to notice you and you always talk about yourself. That's a selfish person. You better be careful about that. Or they're hoping that they, they get the attention of somebody who's famous, or you get uh, your favorite person uh, that you like, a person in high places, you love hanging around them. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Now, 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 doing good things, amen, can be tainted, amen, by your motive and your intention. And that's nothing but selfishness because a lot of people who serve has this whole thing about wanting to be noticed and you want attention. No. Believe it or not, you actually want attention. No. Now, you can say what you want. No. To the African American, let me tell you something. Right now, this is one of the most important texts. One of the most, now that's all of the most important that a person can embark upon. You got to watch yourself when it comes down to being selfish. They made you the bishop, but they never made you to be a selfish bishop. Uh, all right? They made you the mayor of the town, but you got to be real careful. You cannot end up being selfish, believe it or not. This, this text is one that's very important. Now, I want us to be aware of selfishness, and I want us to be honest with ourselves. When we look into the mirror, we need to look at ourselves in different ways. We need to look on the inside of ourselves, and then we need to look on the outside of ourselves and to see how your selfishness is treating other people. You got to be real careful about that. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You got to be real careful. Amen. Now, let's go back over the text. Philippians 2, 3, and 4. This is what it said. Do nothing in selfish ambition. This is from another translation. Of vain deceit, rather in humility, value, and you use the word value, value, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interest, but each, you, but each of you to the interest of others. Now, if you are not a child of God, this verse can really keep Round. It can you round. That's the key. You understand? Because it's easy, as I said, to slip into selfishness and to be self centered. Amen? Amen. Selfish people always ask, What is in it for me? What's in it? You understand? I'm going to do this. What's in it for me? What am I going to benefit? You understand? How is my paycheck going to look? What's in it for me? You understand? And a whole lot of people are sitting up in jail because of what? Selfishness. They're sitting up in jail right now for many a year just because they were selfish. And we need to ask ourselves and ask the Holy Spirit, you understand, to bring to remember the scripture that says you should put others in front of you. It's simple as that. Yeah. You're so selfish you can't help mommy and daddy. 
and you know they're suffering, they're cold right now in the midst of this weather and the elements and all of that. They don't have the food that you you are uh, you have, you understand. How many of y'all know what we're talking about? You see, they live in a place of low income and let's say for, that you live beyond Bloomfield Hill in the big Bloomfield house and all of that. You need to help your parents. You need to stop being selfish. I'm sorry I have to bring it home like that. But you need to stop being selfish. You understand. You see, what's in it for me? What am I going to get out of it? That's all we care about. You understand. Oh, oh, can I continually give myself uh, away? How can I give myself away and expect nothing in return? Some people will read this scripture and say, you must have lost, you must be losing your mind if you think that I'm not going to get anything. You understand? You see, but the way you view others are so very important. Now, selfishness always undermines what? Relationships. Relationship. You see, selfishness always undermines rich and satisfying relationship. Whether or not it's your boss, it can be your wife, co-worker, it can be your friend, or not only that, it can be your own family. I know some people who don't visit their own family because of selfishness. That's all they I'm not going to the family reunion. I'm not going to go visit. I'm gonna go. Who brought you into the world and carried you nine months? And you're not going? What makes you so mad? Amen. That you're like a black tiger. You just turn on everybody. What makes you so mad? You understand? How is it that what I'm doing is going to be best, uh, the best interest that is for everybody else? And if you're not careful, selfishness says that I'm more important than other people. Because we do what? We, we, we make our thoughts and our opinions and our needs and our wills and our feelings and our comfort and desires more important than the comfort and desires that is of other people. Selfishness has an unwillingness, a lack of love that is to serve others and to serve God. Amen. You see, and somebody is saying, you mean that I actually have to do this? Put people that is the preferred people above me in a time of pandemic and what I'm going through. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what nobody else is going through, but you don't need to be selfish. Yeah, How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? The world is actually teaching us to be selfish. They're teaching us to be selfish and to put, and that is to put ourselves first. You understand? You see, to put everything in and, and everybody else behind what we are doing. Well, how can I be helped? You understand? It's right there in the text. It says that you have to have the mind of Christ. You understand? That's what it said. It said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being uh, in the form of man, thought it not robbery, to be equal with God. You understand? But he made himself of no reputation. He made himself of no reputation. And he took on the form that is of a servant. Amen. It was made in the likeness of man and being found in fashion as a man. He did what he humbled himself. Okay, amen. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even his death on the cross. Now, Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Do y'all know who that? You don't know who that is. Jesus, the one that is more powerful. He's all powerful, all knowing. Jesus, the mediator between God and man, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, believe it or not, all knowing, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto him. Amen. You cannot get any higher than that. How high do you want to go? That's higher than anybody in this world. Amen. You cannot get any higher in God. But Jesus didn't count all of that godness, believe it or not, all of that godness to be grasped in the thing of equality. He was holding on to the thing of equality. You understand? To the point to whereby he says, you understand, I want to be equal. Equal with the lowest of the lowest. You understand? He didn't carry himself in a way whereby he had his nose up in the air. He didn't carry himself, you understand, about who he really was. You know, Jesus, while he was on the cross, he actually could have called 10,000 angels to get him up. And in the back, in the amazing, all of that power 
and he never thought of himself being so powerful and to the power went beyond God, beyond himself. You understand? Sometimes we testify beyond the scripture and we need to stop doing that. Take the low road sometimes. He didn't walk around with his nose up in the air drinking. That is from the well of selfishness. Thinking that I'm, I'm holier than thou and all of that. And I'm both saved and just dead. You understand? And he didn't have that, uh, uh, how can I say, unwillingness to serve attitude. But the Bible said he humbled himself. Amen. And he set aside, you understand, who he really was. You understand? James 14 said that if you humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, he will lift you up. You understand? You see? Think about somebody else's needs sometimes. That's all we're saying. It's not me. But this scripture is a powerful scripture because it can teach you about yourself. Think about somebody else who don't have food on the table. Think about some people, amen, that had COVID and could be sleeping in their grave. But guess what? God blessed them. Think about the person who visited you and left your house and said goodbye. And guess what? The next time you saw them, they were at Cole's funeral home. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? And you went to see them, amen, and review their body. Think about the time that you had, amen, to live piece of money and you wouldn't even had kept the baby you had out of wedlock. Think about about that, you understand. You wouldn't even bring your mother and father a glass of water. Think about the money that you had. You could have got the church. You could have got the pastor, the saints. How I many y'all know what I'm talking about? You could have had everybody, but you only got you yourself and I. There's some same selfish people in this world. You better view this scripture, because as I look around, I see some of them, the most selfish people there is in the world. Somebody said, who are they? They're everybody. They're presidents, they're bishops, they're kings. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Yes, I'm supposed to selfish man. All you got to do is just look at them, believe it or not. But they're grounded in that selfishness. And they need to get out of that. You're going to have to get out of that self. You're grounded. Uh, being grounded is a term that we use. The general discipline technique we use for children. Amen. You see, and, and, and which one is uh, forbidden to leave or to do certain things because they're grounded or they're disciplined, believe it or not. But I don't want to be grounded in my ministry because of selfishness. I don't want what I want to, to be grounded because of selfishness. You understand? I don't want my gift. You understand? You see, your activities are locked in with yourself. We got to move from that place. The African American, we can't afford to be selfish anymore. We know that you were the first one to eat a candy bar over in Shane Park, but don't get selfish. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's okay if you're the first one to build an airplane. It's okay, believe it or not, if you was a tough, sticky airman and all. It's okay with me, but don't end up being selfish. You understand? Keep me in mind every now and then. You understand? After you climb the ladder, you need to look down the ladder and see who's down there. And you don't need to think of yourself more so than them. Yes, you don't hear me. Great, sir. Believe it or not, we need to stop only thinking of ourselves as selfishness. You understand? Think about when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he not only done for me, but for everybody else. My soul cries out. Because you can't think about you all of the time and your little flat tire. You got to think about somebody else's flat tire. That's on the side of the road. How many of y'all I don't mind doing something for somebody else. The songwriter said, if I can help somebody, if I can do something for somebody, if my mind will allow me to look to the lowness of life and put them in front of myself. Amen. Then he said, he said that, that my living will never ever be in vain. We need to stop being selfish as African American. Amen. God had not given me nothing. I came into this world with nothing. I was a baby. They turned me upside down, slapped me on my backside, and I yelled out. And I'm going to leave from here that way. Amen. You're going to leave here 
for nothing. You understand? You see, Ashton, Ashton, dust to dust. While I was here, I just didn't think about me. I thought about us. And guess what else? You understand? If you keep that in mind, the Lord will bless you every day. Amen? Amen. Stop being selfish. Don't be grounded in self grandizement Get out of that place. You don't have to be selfish. Just think about somebody else. You can push a button, feet will come. You can push a button, and the coolness of the air will come in the summer. You know what? There's some little kids right now that's almost freezing. Yeah. Right here in Detroit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we ought to think about people mm -hmm. sometimes. Yes, sir. Amen. God has been so good. Yes, and we thank God once again. We got a song, but before that, Brother Ted Henry is going to come to us. Amen. With a word of prayer and sharing. There's a saying that I don't know if you've all heard it. It's better to give than to receive. We all know we like to receive. We all like to receive things, but it's all going good to give to others. When you've been blessed, it's always good to bless somebody else. It's not just for you, but to share it with someone else. Now, if you're, uh, if you're in this program and you want to be uh, a giver, we do use Givelify. Give by Give by, or you can put a check in the mail. 7241 Chapter Combo 48212. At the end of this, uh, there's, there's some information. If you want to be a member, look at the join the church and be a member, you can find that information. If you're looking for salvation, you want to give your heart to the Lord, there's information that we will be sharing at the end of this service. We thank you again. Now let's be a good prayer. Father, we bless your name. That we know that God is good to us. Not only receive, but it's good to give, but we want to be givers. When you've been blessed, when you have blessed us, Lord, we want to turn around and bless somebody else. God, we just continue to ask you to continue to have your way in our lives. And we won't be selfish, Lord, but we'll be sharers, Lord. We'll share what we have. There's many out there that need help, that uh, are, are gone day to day without food. But God, we need to be uh, cognizant of that as those people. Now, God, we just ask you to bless us, bless this church, continue to bless our pastor. Lord, just continue to give us a desire to meet the needs not only of our church, not only of the needs of our family, but Lord, others that we know that are in need. We thank you and praise you for this day that you have made. We're going to rejoice and be glad for us in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.